the uncool 13-year-old Josh. He sat there in the corner listening to <laughs> Cheltenham on, on the radio whilst in science classes. That, that would have done serious bits. All right, all, and welcome back to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. And we're covering day four of the Cheltenham Festival. We've been doing our day-by-day -day previews. Hopefully you've enjoyed and have watched the videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this coming to you on Friday morning for the Friday action next week. And it is going to be Gold Cup Day. It's been a, a long week at this stage, waking up on the Friday morning. Fingers crossed, smoking guns gone and done the business in the lucky last on Thursday. We've had a few sherberts afterwards. And we get up on, on Friday. Sometimes can be a tricky day, but this year, Josh, I'm feeling confident. Are you? No. Uh. Not at all. I'm sorry, I wish I had that enthusiasm. The only one decent Friday I had was actually the first day I ever went to the Cheltenham Festival and Deffy Desoy won the Triumph and then Arctic Fire won the County and I backed them both. And the one horse, I actually backed them in a treble. I, I, I used to put on one pound, two pound trebles back in the day because I didn't, obviously I was, I was 16, 15, didn't have the money to spend, didn't have the cash that you did when you were 16 rolling into those bookmakers over in Dublin. And I had a quid or two on a treble with Deffy Desoy won, Arctic Fire won, and the last one was in the Martin Pipe, and it was a Nicky Henderson trained horse called Rather B. And he fell at the first and then hacked up over the same distance in the similar race at Aintree. And I was gutted. Yeah. That day will live long in the memory. And hopefully we can have a similar day to that. But in previous years, I have a bet with my stepdad who got me into racing that if I can have 10 winners for the Cheltenham Festival, uh, he'll give me a grand. Um, doesn't happen anymore. And I was only young, sort of 14, 15. Uh, we did it and the first year I had nine going into the Friday bear in mind one selection in each race nine going into the Friday Rajani Express won the handicap chase that's how long ago it was and I didn't have one winner on the Friday the uncool 13 year old Josh he sat there in the corner listening <laughs> to Cheltenham on, on the radio whilst in science classes that, that would have done serious bits of my social sort of standard at, at, at school after oh, a, a lot of cash and uh it does it does go to show friday though because friday gets away from you if you don't back the winner of the triumph you're in you're going down a dark hole because then you're scrapping around in the county the albert bartlett gold cup can go to and from you and then you're into the hunter's chase and geez if you're relying on the hunter's chase as a get out stakes you're in a big big pile of not so goodness. Never happened. Absolutely gutted. Let's crack on. If you do enjoy this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And do get your comments down below, your seven selections for the Friday. We're very keen to listen to them. And thank you very much for the support on the three previous Cheltenham previews. But the first race is the Triumph Hurdle. And we've got a rematch between Vorban and Pied Piper from their Punchestown Maiden Hurdle. And I think both of them have drastically improved since. Which one, however has improved the most very hard to quantify uh, i think if you were to put a gun to my head i'd probably say vauban i just thought he was super at the dublin racing festival it wasn't a horse i liked going into that race at all i thought he was being maybe overrated for finishing second in a maiden hurdle people were basing it off collateral form which i hate doing but he quickened up like a good horse and i know pied piper did it so impressively at cheltenham so that puts you in this kind of crux of a position I just wonder what he's beaten at Cheltenham. You know, it was a dog's race, really, in behind. And he's done it on the snap, but, and he's won by half the track. So, f very hard to know. I just think Phil Dorr is a very, very good marker of form. I still think he's a very good horse. And I really hope... I see maybe why they would go to the Boodles, but I really hope he runs in this race. He deserves to run in the race. He's been the flag bearer for juvenile form all year. And he's a good horse, and he'll be in the three, no matter what in the tribe i have no kind of issue with that and if he runs in the race i think he'd almost be an each way cert at six or seven to one to fill the frame and that's maybe how i'd play it if that was to rock up but between the top two very hard but maybe vauban achieve more winning at leopard's Den than pied piper at cheltenham and that's just how i'd go with it if you were going to pin me down i would just say Pied Piper to confirm the form. Maybe. I just like the fact that he's been to Cheltenham already. He's travelled. He's been around the course. 
and he's won very impressively. So not sure the form is up to much. And, and Vorban definitely beat a better horse in Phil Dor in the spring juvenile at Leopardstown. But I like the fact that he's got the experience around the course with Pi Piper. So maybe just him. But I am gutted uh, when I never put up Vorban in the Andy Post series. When Ben Ord was ruled out for the triumph, <laughs> I said if I could swap him for anything, it'd be Vorban. Before he even made his debut, he was 25 to 1. What on earth was I playing at? Absolute joke. What were you playing at putting up Ben Ord in September time? That was one of the most outrageous selections I've ever come across. I, I just thought classy JP flat horse, maybe similar to Sir Eric. And then the worst thing is, is I thought it was clever before the spring juvenile and put up Phil Dor for the triumph hurdle at three to one, thinking nothing will come out of the woodwork. I was made to look very, very stupid. The next race is the county hurdle, over two miles over the same distance as the Triumph hurdle. And this looks very open, but we're, bo we're both very sweet on State Man if he runs here off 141. I'd actually go as far to say he'd be the best well-handicapped horse at the whole of the Cheltenham Festival. I think we he'd certainly be up there. Uh, it's really just an experience thing, obviously going into the county hurdle, having had just two runs in Ireland, and one of them he's ended up on the deck. You know, it, it's a big ask, but it's an ask that probably is within him especially if he does have pounds in hand and he's five to one i'll back him wherever he goes he's just a horse i quite like uh, and i think the county yard is the most likely place he'll turn up the other horse that i've been convinced by darrow o'keefe and sometimes it's probably not great to be convinced by jockeys especially on preview evenings but he spoke very well about my mate mozzie and this is his target for gavin cromwell he's got a likable enough profile in terms of the fact that he's running good standard novice hurdles he was unlucky not to win the royal bond and he had a bit of a pipe opener at the dublin racing festival and cromwell's horses weren't running great as well he's 14 to 1 i think he's decently handicapped off mid 140s and he could outrun his odds for cromwell who's a yard that's going to come into form he already has in the last couple of days and could have a good shot i think if stateman runs here he's going to take a serious bit of beating if he doesn't I think Willie Mullins still holds the key to the race, and that is with Tax for Max, a five-year-old. You might be thinking, who is Tax for Max? That's because we've not seen him since the uh, the Galway Festival, the 21st of July, when he finished second to Far Out. It was Paul Towanen's ride that day, and that form's worked out pretty well. The one thing that's interesting with him is his first run for Willie, seven lengths behind Tiupu in a grade three juvenile hurdle, and then he was chucked straight into the triumph hurdle. He finished sixth. No sort of race. But that's a serious step for Willie Mullins just to chuck him in. I would back him non runner no bet because we've not seen him so far. But I think if this horse had run between July and now, he's clearly a spring ground horse. He'd be a much shorter price. Then he'll just sneak in at the bottom. Well, I think he should anyway. Uh, but what is interesting is he's a 110 rated flat horse in Germany. Clearly lots of, of good pedigree and, and flat horses have got very good record in the county hurdle. So do five-year-olds. Taxamax at 20 to 1 is definitely of interest if state man doesn't run the next race then is the uh, albert bartlett take it away yeah the good old b lad can i just say what did you think of manella crooner coming out of the festival yeah obviously disappointing for for connections uh for manella crooner he did have a chance in the race i was probably going to take him on one way or the other it doesn't seem to be a massive uh, injury or anything so he should be back for punch us down but obviously for all of us on the old bartonstown lad express it's another horse potentially gone by the wayside the only issue with that is that the rumored mill and i know sometimes people can get excited on the exchanges but they're hinting towards the way that now manella crooner is not going to run that ginto might run in the albert barton and that does put a fly in the ointment because i do like ginto and he'd probably be a horse i would have a saver on because i do think he's got a very good chance i'm not deterred though barton's down lad He's been my horse for the year since before the October meeting. I do genuinely, and sometimes you can say things, you know, rashly. I do genuinely think I was the first person to back him for the Albert Bartlett. I was the first person to talk about him. People have come and gone over the year, uh, but he's now 8-1 to one for the race, having been put up at 50-1, to one, and this could be one of the greats of all time. If he wins, Josh, 
What a night I'm having in the feathered fish on Friday night. Holy smokes. It was a serious, serious effort to put him up at 50 to 1 and, and to highlight him as a Bartlett horse so early on, especially with connections, especially with what he'd done so far. And then the fact that he won at Cheltenham was great, but he still didn't really move in the market. He was 33 to 1 after that win at Cheltenham. I couldn't quite believe it. He's now been found in the market 8 to 1. I'll be rolling in with you with him. It is interesting that it looks like Ginto's going to step up and trip after Milena Kruna. Uh, unfortunately had a setback. I don't think Hollow Games is going to run in here, and I'm going to get onto why I like him for a different race later on. But in between, we've got the Cheltenham Gold Cup, the feature of the four days. Albion Photo coming back. Can he win it again as an older horse? Unlikely. Galvin, is he classy enough? Manella Rindo, can he bounce back? Can he retain his crown? And Apolutard, can he... Can he stop finishing second in these good grey bonds at Cheltenham and finally get the job done? Yeah, very open race. Could go any which way, uh, as you say. Plenty of angles. Uh, Plutar has been a very good horse, but hasn't quite managed to get it done in, in these big grade ones at Cheltenham, as you alluded to. And uh, He got beaten by Manella Indo last year. And I think if the two horses rock up in the same form again this year, I can't see how the form's going to be re reversed in an absolute ideal world, would you have Jack Kennedy on Manella Indo? Yes, you would. But Robbie Parr uh, rode the horse very well at Leopardstown. He obviously won the Gold Cup on Sizing John. So uh, no bad replacement whatsoever. He's 5-1. to one. He'd be one of my stronger plays of the day, actually. I do really like him. I obviously have backed Album Photo. I think he's got a chance of filling the frame. I think he's probably overpriced at 10-1. to one. He probably should be more 6-7-1. to one. Uh, and I think he's got a chance of running well, but he is vulnerable to younger younger legs at this stage. Uh, that being said, if he does win, even if he was to chin Manella Indo on the line, you know which horse I'd prefer to win, and it would certainly be the boom. He was the the OG horse of, of me on my YouTube budding YouTube career, so uh, I've got to always stick beside me. He owes me nothing, as the overused phrase goes. Look how far you've come since those days. Talking about Buddy Rich to me. Absolute dive. Absolute dive. What's gone wrong with your career? What's gone wrong? Um, I quite like Galvin um, in the Gold Cup. I didn't expect him to win any of those three-mile races around Leopardstown, the grade ones. And he did. He beat Aprutar in the Savills chase. I didn't expect him to have the speed to do that. I was very encouraged by that. I think he'll improve. He's got Davy Russell on board. The two extra furlongs will be right up his street. A real hard run Gold Cup, hopefully, although it's hard to see where the pace is going to come from in this race. Especially with question marks around Aplutard, can he reverse that form? Manella Rindo, Chantry House, is he good enough? I couldn't have Protector at. Album photos getting on. I think Galvin could be the steady improver and he could be the one to land the Gold Cup this year. The following race is the Fox Hunters. And the one that I put up a couple of weeks ago was Vorslet for the race. I know the trainer has winged leader as well. Not sure if Vorslet's going to run. He could do. And if he does, I'd still side with him. If he doesn't, I've absolutely no idea. Yeah, not a race of a major play on. I'd love wing leader to go and do it, but he's a he's a tricky rider at the best of times, so he's going to have to uh, be very good on him, Barry O'Neill. Now, Barry O'Neill's ridden the horse more times than you could count, so he knows the horse inside and out. He's the improver of the lot. Look, Bill away. You kind of feel at some stage he might win one of these hunter chases, but are you really going to be willing to get your fingers burnt again with him coming second at two to one, five to two? I'd be willing to let that go, and I'd sleep pretty easy with him winning, to be honest, at that price. Wing leader more at five to one, eleven to two. You know, it's a pretty stingy each way bet at that price, but. Uh, that's probably the way I'd play the race, but not a massive say. Mare's chase time. Who do you fancy here? Well, I put up Ellie May. Uh, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the price I put her up at as well. She was eight to one after people had kind of got cold feet about her. She's five to two at the moment. If I'm being honest, I don't think five to two is a brilliant price because I think Ellie May is going to run a very good race. I think she'll be 100% in the first couple. I just wonder whether something will beat her. Um, I'm just not maybe quite as strong as her at that price and you do have concertista you do have mount ida there's also a few decent enough mares in behind as well i think ellie may's the most likely to run very well i'd love her to win she's a mare i like a lot there's just something nagging me which out of concertista and mount ida are you most fearing i don't know i think mount ida's got a really good engine but you'd have to be concerned about her going left-handed especially with given what she's done with kim muir I know you're going to make a good case for her now, so I don't want to. I don't want to do a tiger roll that you did a few days ago. 
But I don't like Concertista at all in the race. Why? I don't know. She should have won the mayor's hurdle last year. She didn't. She shirked us after the last, having bungled us. Her jumping is low. She doesn't have very much experience. I don't think she's a world beater. I, I do concede that she probably shouldn't be what she is now. She's now 7-2, to 4-1. to one. She probably should be in and around that 5-2, to 11-4 to four mark. But I'd be, I'd be prepared to take her on. I, I, I would think Ellie May is a more solid option than Concertista. That being said, if Concertista was at her absolute Sunday best, she would probably beat Ellie May. So it's a hard one. It is a hard one. But I do think Constitutia improves around Cheltenham. She's never really ran a bad race there. The one downside with her is her inexperience. She's only had two runs over fences. It's not ideal whatsoever. On Hurdle's form, I think she'd pick these up and, and take them with her. She's, she's that much superior. She's low and economical at offences. Sometimes it's, it's too low for comfort. But if she can get rounds, an adequate round of jumping here, I think she wins. I think she's got too much class for, for Ellie May and Mount Ida. I would worry that Mount Ida doesn't have the pace to win around Cheltenham on quick ground over two and a half, especially with the likes of Ellie May and Concertista in there. And I don't think we've seen the best of Concertista over fences. I think she will improve. She's four to one now. I think that's a pretty decent bet. And if you were... Going to back courses at 4-1 to one each way, which I don't do, but if you were going to, I think she will be in the frame, on the nose, Concertista. I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to make her my nap of the Friday in the Mayor's Chase at 4-1. to one. Go on. I don't know, I, I just, I wouldn't put her as my nap. I also wouldn't back her each way, to be honest, because <clears throat> if I'm being brutally honest, I think Concertista will win, or she'll be on the deck somewhere, or have not jumped adequately and be n not there. I kind of, I, I do think if she puts it all together, she could win. I do get that. Um, I just have a fear that she could do something stupid. As I give you a nice ruffle up as Concertista passes the line, giving a salute to the crowd. You're just trying to make up for the fact that I did you on the line with Black Tears last year when you were all over Concertista. And I've Never done happened. you on the line. Jack Kennedy's got up. We've all, me and my dad have gone through the roof up here giving it this enormous celebration. So you're just looking for vengeance. I understand. Martin Pipe time then, the final race of the Cheltenham Festival. And I've got one in here for you. And I think he's going to run in the race. Well, at least he was before Milena Kruner came out of the Albert Bartlett. And that's Hollow Games. Gordon Elliott was very shocked that he got a 1-4-3. I think he thinks he's well handicapped. And the angle... And I've said this many times, the angle I like in this race is good novices that are going to be potential grade one novice chases next year over three miles. And I do think that is the case with Hollow Games. Like we've been fairly reluctant to, to, to like him this year and, and he's looked slow and they've thought of the Ballymore and I've gone, no, he's not going to win the Ballymore. Quick enough to win the Bartlett, but a handicap of 143. If Stateman doesn't run here, I think he could be really, really smart. They were definitely thinking and leaning towards this race before Minella Kruner came out of the Albert Bartlett. But if Ginto is going to replace him there, I see no reason why Hollow Games would represent the same owner in that race, having two at it. And he'd come here. I think he's got a massive chance. If he doesn't deploy the getaway off 140, I think he's really interesting. So they would be my two, because I do think State Man will go into the county hurdle. So Hollow Games, I think he's currently 10 to 1. Yeah, I can see the angle behind that. He could be the, the, a classy horse in there. I'm really quite sweet on one if he runs in this, and it's the Mullins horse adamantly chosen. Uh, there's been a money around for him as if he might be the, the one that goes here. And I think if they get Jack Foley up on this horse, claiming a few pounds... I think he's got a class chance of 142. He got beaten in two maiden hurdles at the start of the year. Slightly disappointing, but he ran away with the maiden hurdle the last day. His Punchestown Festival bumper form was excellent last year. I think he's just better than this, to be honest. I think he's a graded horse. It wouldn't surprise me if he went very close in this and was able to go on and compete in a grade one at the Punchestown Festival after it. I do believe he's at that level. He's around 10 to 1. I think he's got a cracking chance. And one, just in terms of trends and in terms of races that he likes to target, I think it would be remiss of me not to have a few quid on the goffer. For Gordon Elliott, he's won that Michael Purcell race, which is a race we've both highlighted as being an interesting one. He's not really the type of horse I thought Elliott was going to send at that, because he looks a little bit slow, if I'm being honest. But he's just the type of horse that could be sneaking in under the radar. He's 14 to 1. I just think it's 
one of those that, considering we've been pointing at that race as being a likely race for one of Gordon's good Martin Pipe horses to run in, he went and won it, he's going to be in the Martin Pipe, I'm going to back up what we've said all year, and I'll have a few quid each way on him as well. 28 races, done and dusted. All season, Andrew, we've been building to these four videos and these four days of racing, and it's finally done. I feel quite emotional that it's come to an end, but the next time that we'll be speaking to you on screen will be a Cheltenham Festival review. That feels so weird. If you do go to Cheltenham for the four days, please do enjoy yourself. Have a brilliant time, and hopefully you back plenty of winners. But thank you so much for the support on the channel for the whole of the jump season. It's meant the absolute world, and we won't be stopping. We've got Aintree, Punchestown to come as well. Yeah, it's been brilliant, Josh. And as you say, uh, we've still got plenty of uh, stuff to come this season, and... It's only going to be a week and a half time, Josh, before we can start back in Bardenstown Lab for the National Hunt Chase. So, got to think of the, the positives, got to always find the, the grey lining in the sky. And